welcome to the Collective Arcana, a channel all about tabletop gaming. Today we're going to talk about the Percy Mini from the Critical Role Kickstarter set. Um, just a couple of tips and tricks and some pointers on prepping this mini before you get started painting. So my camera's not great for close-ups, so I'll put a picture up instead um, while we talk about them. I tried the YouTube makeup trick, it still doesn't work. But um, so to begin, we're going to take off the flashlights. So the flashlights on this were, there were a lot of them, but they weren't too bad. There was one on the top of his head, and there were some down his coat, but they came off really easily with um, just an X-Acto knife. Um, the trickiest ones are probably on the back. He had uh, some pretty tight spots, uh, but you can get those cleaned up and, they're, and the, they'll look fine uh, in between his arm. So right here where his gun is, um, that little hole had a bunch of extra plastic in it. And then there was one across the top of his head that was kind of gnarly to clean up. But other than that, his model was in great shape. There was a gap uh, on his belt that I filled in with Miller Putt. I don't think you actually need to do that because it's such a dark area. It could be a shadow. So that's optional. Um, but the cleanup wasn't too bad. And then from there, I, I paint flesh colors first, uh, then I did all the white, um, and that's up to you how, what order you want to go in, but I would recommend doing the metallic paints last because they can sometimes smear and the shimmer in that paint will transfer and get on like the coat and stuff, and so you don't want that to happen. So try to do the golds and silvers last. For his glasses, I did this like steely bluish metallic for the lenses uh, and then I did gold on the outside frames and then after after I did the those colors I did all the leather so he has a lot of different leather parts so he has gloves boots he's got pouches he's got holsters and when there is so much of that going on I like to break them up by using different shades of brown so you can have like a more gray toned or a more red tone and that way you have some kind of variation um, so I did a lot of um, red tones around like the whole the holster and uh, I did more gray tones on uh, like his gloves and stuff like that just to break it up a little bit uh, and then on this back I have a lot going on is I should just take a close-up picture of that because there's a lot going on back there um, I'll take a picture for your reference and then uh, I'll throw it in the blog too if you want to see these pictures um, I'll link all that stuff down below. So after that, I did the blue, which is the fun part, right? <laughs> it's the iconic blue. You recognize Percy in an instant when you see the, the blue and the gold together. So I did something a little tricky with this to make it kind of pop. So I started with this like royal blue color. It's very, very blue. And then this was mostly what was on the base. So that's the very first color I laid down anywhere the coat was. The next layer, I mixed in some of this next sort of a denim-y color. I mixed a little bit of that into here. And then I started to build up my highlight. Um, and then I think what really made the, the contrast stick out was this bright turquoise. I actually kind of layered a lot of this turquoise on the very top, which isn't terribly noticeable, but you should be working in light layers anyway. So, so here, if you look, the that highlight is actually turquoise. And then, I mean, if you want to use some light blue, especially if you don't have this color, you can also get away with that. I didn't end up using, a, I don't actually think I used any of this light blue. I might have lightened it up a little bit for the last highlight, but um, I'm, I'm mostly stuck to this. But if you don't have this, you'll still get a great like gradient if you highlight with this blue. I just think that the greenish tone gave it some like depth and, and personality. I just want to add one little thing. Um, I've noticed in a lot of painting groups and, and videos, a lot of people recommend to never uh, use tiny brushes. And I have to disagree with that, <laughs> especially with a mini like this. There's a lot of like very tiny detail. Um, the argument is that the tiny paint brushes, they don't hold any water because they're so small that the paint dries up and then it gets all cruddy and it doesn't lay and then you can't, you can't work with it. 
And that's true if you use a little um, short brush like this. However, I found some really great brushes with really long bristles. They're still very tiny, but they hold so much water that I never ran into the paint drying issue. If you can see, I mean, they're still the same size um, tip, but they're where they're so long, they just they didn't brittle up on me. So um, you shouldn't paint the whole mini this way, but with the very tiny, like he has an actual like chain on his uh, gun in the back. And you have to paint the chain links. I mean, you, you kind of, I mean, you can dry brush if that's what you're into, but um, I like doing, I like hand painting the detail. That's just fun for me. <laughs> so, I don't know. I If you want to try these, you know, you, you got to kind of make up your own thing. You can't always just do what all the advice says because it might not be what works for you. We all have our own techniques, and that's kind of the point, right? That Those came in handy for um, the trim. I mean, it's really tiny threads on all the way back around the on the coat and stuff and you could dry brush it um i feel like if you dry brush it it might be a little um, the lines won't be too clean it really depends on what you're going for here i personally have, want these to be on like display in my house we love critical role it's a big deal for us we want them to look like a display set so it's important to me that they look you know as good as i can make them look so uh, I hand painted every thread and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. If this was a, um, you know, for the board, for the maps, you know, for an actual game, if it was just an NPC and you needed to paint it fast, or maybe you want to paint it fast, you could dry brush it and still get all those threads and detail and stuff. But that's just not um, the kind of tutorials I'll be doing. So, but anyway, so that's, that's about all I have to say about him. He's a great sculpt great details. He was a lot of fun to work on. I had more fun with him than Keyleth, unfortunately. Keyleth gave me some trouble. Um, but it, I'll get through him. <laughs> I've been thinking about doing Jester next, and I'm a little nervous about that because she's uh, a little rougher of a sculpt, so that should be an interesting video. Um, if you are stuck on this mini in any place, uh, put a comment down. I'll try to help you or answer questions, or maybe someone else can. Um, and I'll link the brushes and all that stuff down in the description. Um, but I hope this was helpful. And just uh, give us a like, a subscribe, follow. I'll be doing videos on all these minis that came with the Kickstarter. I've got a couple up already, Puma, uh, Keyleth. So uh, ring the bell and, and you'll see when those are posted. I'm trying to get through them as fast as I can. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Welcome to the collection.